Uh, oh, oh. Uh, I'm Mike. Uh, I work for IBM. Uh, so uh, I didn't make slide. Did make slides this year. In the topic is MM documentation of Lex Zerov. Uh, what we had a couple of years ago was uh, Mel Gorman's book, Understanding Linux Memory Management, and a bunch of text files. And now, these days, Mel's book uh, pretty much is uh, like old Unix uh, textbooks about operating systems. It covers the basic concept, but uh, uh, details uh, are not there. May many things changed since then. And uh, uh, some of very important things that are now present in the memory management, like uh, THP, for example, uh, are not mentioned in the 15, I think now a 20 years old book. Uh, as for the text files, uh, we did uh, the transition to RST, thanks to Mauro, uh, John, uh, some want me. Uh, it's a bit more organized now these days. We have a different section for user-facing documentation and different section for kernel developers and some coverage of internal APIs. Uh, but there is a ton of things that could be improved. Uh, and uh, I don't have much to say about it. It's more the like a, more of a process talk. What can we do about the MM reviewing process to improve the documentation? Uh, what can we do as a community to encourage people to write more documentation, to describe the existing things, uh, to make uh, new features documented? And uh, how can we help uh, maybe newcomers uh, who want to, to help help us with the documentation uh, to move forward? Uh, so the idea I had was it, uh, that's what I'm trying to do at least to review uh, major MM patches uh, from the documentation perspective. Uh, so you and Liam probably heard from me, uh, and uh, I know Matthew does as well. Uh, sometimes, uh, but uh, I don't see other reviewers uh, jumping on on the uh, features uh, like uh, MGLRU or maple trees, for example, and saying, hey, it's not documented or something like that. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew, you, you only comment about user visible effects. Yeah, I know. I reviewed it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's no comments. Uh, so, but there are the things that uh, I I I just can't keep up uh, recently uh, because of a lot of stuff going on in the, with me. So, uh, any help would be appreciated. And there is also a lot of tribal wisdom that. Uh, is nowhere in in the written form, uh, and I remember I have, I've asked last email several years ago so if he has something to share, just some notes, random. I might uh, arrange it in a more proper documentation, and uh, well, it never happened. It's which, which part did Vlastimil not share? So uh, I, I'd be glad to hear suggestions. I, I'm sure John will be glad to hear suggestions. Uh, probably we also can participate in some Google Summer of Docs uh, or something like that as a MEM community. Uh, John wants Mike. Hi. Um, so I have a, a few minor suggestions. And I, th I think, first of all, let me let me anchor it by saying what. Think about the experience you get from two different. There's two different experiences you can get. One is you're in the code, and you're looking at the code, and you see the documentation next to it. The the, the you know per function documentation and the, and the per file documentation. There's never any per file documentation. Um, that's one experience. Uh, the other experience is you go in and you read um, either uh, something under capital documentation, either the HTML, which is pretty, or the RST. Um, and if you do the second one, you're going to find that it's a, um, 
is not as good as it could be because there's some sections that were written narrative style, like, you know, here's how such and such works, and that's great. It may be aged, but it still gives you a roadmap. It's very nice. Um, but mixed in with that is a whole bunch of noise and horrible stuff, which is generated from stuff that you wrote with good intentions over in the code, because the system um, is set up to pick up two of those, those two separate types of documentation and treat them the same because there's a there's an underlying belief that they're the same. So here you get nice narrative style stuff and then a whole bunch of stuff that Sphinx formats in a super white space, lots and lots of white space. So it'll say, um, you know, here's a function, here's its arguments, here's a bunch of boilerplate things like page means struct page that you don't want. Uh, and, and so now you've burned half a, half a screen full of stuff that tells you nothing, you know, and now you're still scrolling. You see what I'm saying? So this is not as good as it could be. And so, I mean, I have a couple suggestions, but it's easier to identify problems than to actually solve them. But I, I wanted to point out <laughs> what the problems are <laughs> first. That's John to blame. <laughs> but, <laughs> right, but it, I think it's important to separate those two things out. I, I just wanna, I don't know the best way to do that, but you shouldn't be indiscriminately scrounging around the code and finding stuff that was written carelessly and putting it in with the carefully written narrative. That's my main input. <laughs> it's, it's done. All right. Um, yeah, everything you say is, is accurate and good. Um, I would... I don't think the documentation directly is useful for documenting the code. I think it's good for user-facing documentation, but I think the documentation directory is good for user-facing documentation, and I try to be diligent to remind people when they had proc of update it, update it. But for documenting the code, I think the place to document the code is in the code, where we can look at it all the time or where we maintain it. And that's uh, skillful, literate code commenting, and code commenting should not tell you what the code does, because the code does that, it should tell you why it does it. It should tell me stuff that I cannot learn by looking at the C code. Well, with man block, I did an intro documentation section, and I tried to keep it up to date. Yep. So this probably like two, three paragraphs about page allocator before the 800 lines, 8,000 lines would be useful as well. And not the, maybe not the RST, TXT, or whatever in the documentation directory, but uh, some piece of uh, text uh, the problem is that uh, code evolves much faster than the text. And we don't really care about it. And even the computation inside the code, uh, we, from once, uh, from once uh, pretty frequently we get a mismatch between kernel documents and the actual code. I think uh, this warning is disabled in the build, right? No, it's, it's, it's there. It's there? Yeah. Build warnings, and so, so they ignore them. That's something we've been trying to fight for a long time. I don't entirely agree with you, Andrew, on, on where the documentation should be. Uh, a lot of it belongs in the code, but that won't give you a coherent narrative of how you pull the system together as a whole. Um, you can do it, and one thing I was going to suggest is to look at what the DRM people have done with their documentation, where they have, in fact, put a lot of it in prose form, in the code, in doc blocks, and then they, they stitch it together in the restructured text so that you can build a nice manual out of it. But all that stuff is there in the code if you want it there. And so you get this nice theory that if it's in the code, then developers will update it when they update the code. Um, it's, it's a nice theory. <laughs> um, but um, let, let me just say one more thing, and then I'll give this up, which is that when I, when I inherited the documentation directory, what I got was this incredible un unorganized pile of junk um, with lots of spider webs and all of that. And so we've been trying to organize things and all that. And what we have now is a whole lot of smaller unorganized piles of, of stuff. And it's an improvement. At least you know which pile to look in. Um, but we suffer from the twin problems of one kind of trying to frantically collect and hoard every bit of documentation we have because it's been so hard to get. 
Um, it's amazing when I go through to try to delete some old and obsolete documentation sometimes. People just don't want to let go of it. It's like getting rid of your heirloom coffee cup set or something. Um, you just can't do it. But the, the bigger thing is there's nobody who's really charged with creating a coherent overall experience with the documentation. And so we still have stuff that's really been thrown together. It's great, you know, Mike, that you, you did all that work on a lot of the MAM docs and all that, and it's an improvement. But you don't get a coherent whole that way. You get a collection of stuff. It's still a collection and, of stuff. And it would be really nice if we had somebody somewhere with the time to, to really build it together into a documentation, a document, a manual. Well, I for Mal, it was a PhD, so we need like at least two PhD students now. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I wanted to use a, a recent <laughs> experience to say, you know, none of this works because we don't have enough reviewer bandwidth and reviewer time. Um, so uh, the example I'm thinking of is, is Neil Brown did an absolutely amazing job, put in a lot of work to document the reader head code. And I was clearly the right person to review it, and I was too busy, and I didn't do it, and so a large part of this is my fault. Um, he wrote something that's like 90% right. And every time I look at it, I see the 10% that's wrong, and it bugs me, which is, of course, it's the wrong thing to think about. It's like, ah, there should never have been merged. But of course, that's stupid, because it should have been merged because it was documentation, it was 90% right. Um, but the weird thing is, is, it's this wonderful bit of prose, and it completely ignored the other wonderful bit of prose which was actually right, that was already in the file. So even having the documentation in there with the code doesn't work. And I, I, I just don't know how to fix that, because Neil clearly didn't read the documentation that was already there before he wrote the documentation that he wanted to read. Um, and yeah, I, it's time, and people, and expertise, and we just don't have enough of it. And I, I mean, we, 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 we need more interns. We need, we need more people who, who can spend time on this. And God help us, we, we need to go, to our com go back to our employers and say, do we have any spare technical writers who can do a good job of, because you know, tech writing's a skill, and, and many of us are not good at it. <laughs> and those who are don't necessarily have the time to do as much of it as, as, as we should. And yeah. And, no offense, John, Colonel Doc sucks, I hate it. You, you knew that, I know, I, I know you don't love it either. I mean, we, we, we've all inherited this awful syntax from Java Doc or Gnome Doc or whatever the hell we did, and it's, it, really, it, but it forces you into a bad style. What about, let's say, mentoring Google Summer of Docs? I, I, see. I, I, I would love to, but summer is also when Oracle has interns, and so I have an intern starting in the summer, and I need to spend I my time see. with okay. my intern, and I can't spend it with your intern. Sorry. Michael may. I mean, the, the biggest problem with uh, reasonable documentation is that you need to know a lot just to start writing that. I uh, didn't know a lot before I started writing it. Excellent. <laughs> But um, it really depends what you want to uh, really document. For example, if we are talking about how the how our rec uh, reclaim process work, that's full of really subtle details that uh, is spread over several brains. But uh, you have to put all those people into the same room to force them to put something down. And that's where the primary problem I, uh, lies, I believe, where um, you really have to find time for, uh, for that kind of work. Uh, having a student or somebody not really experienced in that, uh, uh, in, in the respective area, uh, will not, or very likely will not generate a very good documentation. Probably. It might force people to, for example, the experience. It with, will force people to review it at least. Yeah, for example, with Neil asking all those questions about GFP flex, because yeah, that just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, because that's historical, you know, so would it be fair to do it like that? We do not have that many Neils, so, uh, I mean, his approach to documentation is excellent because he just looks from a different point of view than most memory management look, uh, because uh, he's a user. We tend to think about uh, 
how things work, but not how people might use that. And uh, yeah, so it's a cooperation in that respect would be really great. So, but uh, we really need those people asking those questions and then um, putting that in some kind of documentation. But uh, having a coherent and uh, good documentation that somebody can use is really hard. I, at many times, I just refrain from reading the code and just go through LWN archives and then just relearn things from there. As sad as it is, that's... Oh, no, it's not oh, sad. <laughs> Kudos to John. So I don't have much to add, right? It's more or less everybody has limited time and... Uh, Actually, there, there is one job that an intern could do, uh, which is we have an awful lot of kernel doc that we have written, and it's not linked to any RST file anywhere. And if it's in a header file, it isn't even being checked. Um, and I have like three patches outstanding at the end of my tree that I've, I, I never quite get around to submitting in any merge window, which improved that situation a little bit, but it's like, you know, if, 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 if we can find a summer of docs in turn to just go through and make sure that every piece of kernel doc that we've written is actually linked into an RST file somewhere, that will at least improve, it will at least improve the number of warnings. Uh, <laughs> um, and and it, will, it will give a few more, it, it, will, it will make a few more functions actually documented in the HTML. Probably badly, but you know it's it, it's a it's a bigger pile of stuff. It will create some more visibility, probably, because like if this student will be sending patches, we'll look at them and we'll say, hey, probably we should change here and there and there. But but in the end, it really is for the most part just a bigger pile of stuff, <laughs> and that doesn't always necessarily help. Oh. You know, if you can get cross-references to functions in there and that sort of thing, that's useful. But, but otherwise, you've just made the pile a little deeper. Um, just to add one other thing on expertise, a lot of what I know I learned by writing the driver book. Um, I, was, I really shouldn't have been trying to write that book when I started it. <laughs> um, you know, there's, people can learn if they have the right mindset and the, the desire to do that. You don't need somebody who's an expert to start. You just have to be willing to go through a painful period until they've figured it out. Uh, Linux device drivers was the book that I learned Linux on in like 1997. So I mean, I, I think that was before you got involved with the book. That was just Alessandro, yeah. Uh, but I mean, that, was, that, that book has just been the gold standard for so many years. And I still refer to the LDD3 PDF that you have on the LWN site. So, you know, thank you. And obviously Alessandro as well, because that is how I learned Linux. So I, I think that we need to look at how um, the best document we have in the kernel is handled. Um, memory barriers. <laughs> <laughs> well, to but scare that, children, I mean, right? there's expertise. Paul wrote, wrote most of it. Um, it's actively maintained. Um, it is to the point. It's very clear. Uh, newcomers, even though like barriers, barriers are scary in general, but even a newcomer can come and read the document and get something out of it. Um, I just think that we should look at how that is is done. I, I think one way this works really well is that this document already had like an excellent structure. And then a lot of people who are actually not necessarily good at technical writing can still go in there and update and, and complete content. And I wonder if we shouldn't be looking for like a unicorn person that's great at writing and great at understanding all the technical parts. You know, once you have somebody put a structure in there who's good at spinning up the narrative, who's good at editing, I think we actually might find a lot of people who would be happy to supply pieces, bits and pieces of the actual content. Right, this is a completely different skill set to say, I know how this code works and I can document it versus I can explain how it connects together with the bigger picture. Hey. 
and probably John will do it sometime. Yeah, set up a document. I'll, I'll be happy to <laughs> fill in stuff. <laughs> It's, it's a template for page allocator documentation, A, B, C. And then we have something for VM scan and it covers like all the huge part. We should document it before it's obsolete in the next couple months. <laughs> <laughs> Mike. So are there some high order High order offenders of APIs and flows that people get wrong, all the, like in terms of where the near term focus should be on where documentation needed, or you just, you just focus on not making the problem worse by having new stuff be documented? I'm focused on making the documentation better. It's so uh, the, the goal is to have live understanding memory, Linux memory management that is up to date and it covers most of the memory management. Like it's a high level goal. It's a good, mi good mission statement, but, like, but what's the uh, other like actionable chunks that you see in the pipeline of? Uh, the actionable chunks probably uh, for patch sets like uh, SPF, for example, require a general description of the narrative, what SPF does, and probably in the, even in RSTLs or entry objects. Uh, like Liam and you do, did great, uh, they've added uh, their chunks of uh, description of what maple tree is and how, and how uh, multi-generation LRU works. Uh, if we get some another piece of new significant feature, uh, I would like that reviewers, uh, so that somebody except of me would ask for documentation some from, point, from time to time. And then uh, I always try, find, try to find time to write something more, but uh, for the last couple of years it didn't really work. Maybe somebody else will also find a bit of time here and there. I know everybody is very super busy, but still uh, it might be possible. And uh, uh, like I mentioned, the uh, mentoring students, at least they, they will pop up some um, problems uh, that we may address. Yeah, but but kind of to, to Johannes's point, do you think it's because new patch sets coming in don't see a structure of where they're supposed to add on to the narrative? Like, is, is there missing narrative that people are not building on top of, or are you just saying that people are just not, the I, incoming patches aren't doing a great job of having new narratives? I, from what I've seen, many pieces don't have good narratives. Okay. Uh, and uh, some of narratives we have are not very up to date. Yeah, that would be my suggestion for an actionable item is to create this structure that Johannes was talking about. Take the collection of documents, the collection of files, and turn it into something with a consistent storyline, a semi-consistent voice at least, and something that and then you can see what the gaps are in a way that it's hard to do now. And then you have something that people can approach. That would be my priority rather than adding more stuff um, on other subsystems, which is important. But I think that's the bigger problem. I don't see us bringing up documentation a lot during code review. I think that would help a lot. And I think maybe the reason, yeah. I think the reason that we aren't bringing up it up enough is that we just don't have any one person with a coherent view of what the documentation should look like. I think if we all have, it's got to start from somewhere and someone. We were talking earlier about how more things need to have owners. If we have someone who's kind of kicking everyone else, this is what it should look like. And it's easy, easier to take the initiative. So I'm, I'm pretty new to the MM world, I mean, compared to most people in, in the MM. And as I worked through implementing the maple tree, um, I, I ran into a lot of functions. I had no idea what, what it did. Find VMA, for instance, had one line above it. Uh, and it didn't mean it was finding the VMA. It was finding the VMA or the one at a greater address. And so when I did a significant change to that function, I actually documented what it did. And then I looked at how people were using it, and it 
wasn't matching up to what I wrote down. Uh, so so it, it's, it's interesting. Uh, there was one line, and it, although cryptic, it did sort of tell you what it was doing, but nobody looked at that uh, when they used it, I assume. People were just copying the code from other locations. And just because the name said find VMA, they thought that it was finding the VMA. <laughs> right? And, and so when you're looking at naming is hard, right? I mean, and, and it's, it's important when, when you review or look at anyone's code, if the name's wrong, I, I mean, it's, it's a hard problem because naming is hard. Uh, and all the good ones are taken, right? So when, when you're looking at someone's code and, and it's named incorrectly to you, maybe point that out because find VMA is, is a prime example. And then there's a find VMA prev, and, and then there's a find VMA intersect. And, 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 it's just, and it just gets worse, right? So uh, when, when I guess one thing that I really, uh, my, my patches are big. Uh, and, and one reason for that is because as I rewrote the functions, and I had to rewrite a lot, uh, I actually added the documentation to it. And I think that might be a decent step in, in making something coherent or understandable, at least to newcomers, is to at least have a block of what the code used to do when it was first written. So, so I, I think we have like a general issue of which documentation we actually want. Like we, we want user documentation, we want admin documentation, we might want some high level description of a subsystems and high level description of like a functionality like SPF. But then we also want like documentation for explicit functions like find VMA. Like I think uh, in my view, the level of importance, the most important is the user visible, the user, user documentation, what users see, what's going into admin guide. The next uh, is a high level narrative of how the thing works. Uh, so now we have a pile of things uh, that explains how very particular things work, but we indeed do not have the collective narrative and uh, some outline story about uh, Okay, here's memory, here's uh, something, uh, here's a reclaim, here's page allocator, and the, with the references to the relevant documents. And uh, a kernel doc per function documentation, uh, I think, is at least important. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's, it's like find VMA, and what it function it, should uh, be doing is finding a VMA and not like something else, and you shouldn't need like documentation, but that's the, the naming problem. Uh, <laughs> right, but on the other hand, the kernel doc documentation is easier to do. It's easier to do, but sometimes it's like, I think we heard this, like there's a parameter page, and then it says, oh yeah, this, this is the page. There, are, Very there is some redundancy. <laughs> there is some redundancy. This description says it returns the page that it found, and the return says it returns the page. Right. Yeah, and actually you care about like something that that is not what you would expect. You Like in the documentation, you would then find something that you wouldn't expect. Like find VMA, you would document that it has a corner case, of something else, and not like that the parameter page is the page, which is, is not so helpful. What I'm actually trying to say is, it's hard to document these various, like different views or expectations on documentation maybe in one or two directories. I mean, I, I think we have the admin guide, I think the under documentation admin guide, which is supposed to be the user interface. Um, and then I think we have some internal or like internal ABI we have, thingy. We have like three pieces. Uh, the admin guy is a user visible effects of different uh, subsystem inside the MEM. We have a pile of stuff in the documentation VM. And we have uh, some, more some other pile of stuff in the core API. And I think there, there wasn't even from Rick some website about MM, MM Wiki or something like that? I think it tends to be outdated. Yeah, but it's still alive. I mean, I checked it's it some time alive. ago and it explained something. And I like it, it was valuable to have to understand the history. But what, what I'm saying is, like, when I write documentation, for example, I, I updated the memory hot plug documentation a while ago. I mean, I only cared about the user visible effects because everything else will bit rot, in my humble opinion. 
And, and then the question would be like, it's, what that's else it. and where should I document it? Like documenting each function, most probably not. So I think yeah. we would need some kind of rules or like guidelines, what is actually worthwhile documenting and where would you put it? Because sometimes I have no clue what to document and what not. Uh, for memory hot, like, I don't know, I would say uh, the, the process in general, uh, so we take uh, a memory block, we check if we, there, is a, there are all pages uh, that, move, that are movable, that we can free the, that we can free the, the memory block from the pages, uh, to later unplug it, we go to the architecture hooks to, I don't know, uh, arch remove memory and so on. So something like high level and it's entirely up to us to, to keep it up to date, right? Uh, How this, okay, here we go. I, I, I think I'm agreeing with Jonathan more and more. One of the things I was gonna say earlier, which was kind of mentioned is the difference between internal MM documentation and user MM documentation, documentation that's for drivers to call into or stuff like that. And that's one of the places that I get confused because I'm not really into the MM as much as I want to be, but you know, I've done drivers before and then you get people who are calling Find VMA, they don't really know what it does, but they think they know what it does and they probably shouldn't be calling it to begin with. And so I think organization is important and I don't necessarily agree that we shouldn't document the internal stuff, but sometimes when you document that stuff, maybe we get over-documented and then we have users finding functions and going, oh, this seems to do what I want it to do, and, and then they call it. So, yeah, I, I mean, I actually agree with Jonathan as far as taking the KDOC stuff and having it referenced in the, the documentation directory. That's something that I've done a couple of things on, not necessarily for MM, but in other spaces and maybe that can help to organize. So, you know, if you don't find it in your group of, of valid entry points, you know it's not part of your, I, I don't know, I, you know, but basically try to get things organized that way so people know what they're looking at and maybe use the documentation directory and references into the KDOCs to maybe help structure that. I don't know, maybe. Okay, so in, you know, to, 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 to chart us a, a path forward, I'm gonna make a suggestion, um, and then you can all throw things at me, uh, which is our, our, our best book about Linux memory management is, of course, Mel Gorman's. So let's take his structure. It, it's, up at, it's up on kernel.org. I, I just pulled it off my laptop. If you Google Gorman book, it'll find it. Um, so we, we, we take that as our guide, basically. He's, he's, got, he's got chapters. Um, there isn't one about the page cache, so I, I feel personally offended that there isn't one about the page cache, because it means I can't steal any material from him. Um, but That's file system. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so apparently Johannes and I are going to fight at this conference after all. <laughs> um, yeah, so so we 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 set up basically that structure, and we'll add and we'll add a section for for page cache. Um, but we start organizing our documentation along those lines. So we, 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 we set up a, a, an RST file in documentation slash MM that collects these sections in that order because we've got to put them in some order and it works. Um, and I'm gonna to volunteer to do the page cache one or at least maintain the page cache one and accept patches from people and probably do a bunch of the writing myself because I do actually enjoy writing. Um, and then other people can do their area of expertise and that way we're not all trying to work on the same thing all at the same time. I'm, I'm, I'm distressed because I'm seeing a lot of nodding and, and nobody's thrown anything at me yet and, and I'm not used to this. Okay, all right, then that's what we'll do. Yeah, so totally agree. We can start with Mel's layout of the chapters and then more as we go. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll send the cool. Just, just it up, right? Four minutes, so the whole uh, it's okay. Could, I really hope somebody will, would volunteer, so I'm really glad you did. Could, could, uh, uh, could any tools help us? Could a new KDOT tag help to no. 
flag. This is intended for drivers. Uh, this, this is intended for this files. This is entirely system. manual labor. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> and uh, I think we should stop here, right? Thanks, uh, thanks a lot, everybody. If I could just add, anything that involves going through and changing lots and lots of kernel doc comments um, is, is a Sisyphean task that you just don't want to get into. Thanks.